So these are the questions and their answers on chapter 7, which is chemical formula and equations. So let's take a look at the correct answers to the questions. Some marble chips are added to a solution of hydrochloric acid. Complete the equation for the reaction that occurs by writing the appropriate state symbols. Of course, if he says marble chips, that means these are pieces of solid. So that's an S. A solution of hydrochloric acid, that means that it is aqueous. It gives calcium chloride, and calcium chloride is an aqueous solution. Water is a liquid and carbon dioxide is a gas. Which state symbol is used most often for the elements of the periodic table at room temperature? Remember that the periodic table, all group 1, group 2, transition, group 3, all of these are metals and the metals are usually uh, solids except for one which is mercury, otherwise everything else is a solid. In the non-metals, many of them are solids, some of them are gases. So the main state symbol that is used most often is the solid, S. Okay, I um, complete the word equation for this reaction, iron plus sulfuric acid. Iron plus sulfuric acid would give you iron sulfate plus hydrogen. Um, if you don't remember this from last year, uh, we will be doing this again in a chapter on acids and bases. The other question says balance the equation for the combustion of hydrogen. So combustion of hydrogen means reacting it with oxygen to give water. And if we count how many hydrogens before the arrow, we have two. How many hydrogens after the arrow, we have two. So that's balanced so far. How many oxygens before the arrow, I have two oxygens before the arrow. How many oxygens after the arrow, I have only one. And that means that to balance it, I need to put two in front of the water. And that means that I have ruined the hydrogen. I now have four hydrogens, so I need to put two in front of the H2 in order to balance the equation. OK? Beryllium forms a compound with this formula. How many different elements are there in BeOH2? Now, Be is beryllium. That's one element. O is oxygen. That's another element. H is hydrogen. So I have a total of three elements. What is the total number of atoms in the formula? So here, one beryllium, how many oxygens and how many hydrogens? Anything outside the bracket applies to everything inside the bracket. So here I have one beryllium, two oxygens, two hydrogens, so that's a total of five atoms in this molecule. <coughs> okay, when chlorine and hydrogen react together, hydrogen chloride gas forms, so you're supposed to write a chemical formula for this. Writing hydrogen and chlorine, remember that hydrogen and chlorine are diatomic. So you have to write chlorine is Cl2, hydrogen is H2. When they react, they form hydrogen chloride. Now we said hydrogen chloride is made up of hydrogen and chlorine. The valency of each of them is 1, so you cannot put any 2s below. The formula of hydrogen chloride is HCl, and then you need to put a 2 before it in order to balance, but nothing below it. So that's your um, uh, balanced equation. Now, ammonium chloride contains oppositely charged ions. Remember that he wants the state formula, uh, state the formula of the positive ion and the negative ion. Remember that the first one is always positive, the second one is always negative, if you're not sure which one is positive and which one is negative. So you should realize that ammonium is NH4 positive, and it has one positive because its valence is one. And chloride is Cl minus. It has one negative because it's, its valency is one. Write a chemical equation for the burning of hydrogen in air. Again, burning hydrogen in air means reacting it with oxygen. So when we say burning of anything in air, that means it reacts with oxygen. And when hydrogen burns in air, it just gives water. And then you will need to put these twos in order to balance the number of hydrogens and the number of oxygens. Remember, before the arrow, I have two oxygens, so I need to put two before the water in order to have two oxygens, but that makes my hydrogens four, so now I need to put two before the hydrogen, at the, uh, that is before the arrow, in order to make them four hydrogens. So this is your balanced equation. 
Magnesium oxide is also used as an antacid and he goes on and explains that and then he says give the name and formula of the salt produced when magnesium oxide reacts with hydrochloric acid. Now when magnesium oxide reacts with hydrochloric acid what comes out is magnesium chloride and remember that magnesium chloride is MgCl the magnesium is in P, uh, group 2 group 2 means it has a valency of 2 so you put the 2 under the Cl Cl is in group 7 valency 1 so you don't write anything under the magnesium write a chemical equation for the reaction of iron 2 sulfate with sodium hydroxide so he gives you the formula of iron 2 sulfate and you should realize that sodium hydroxide is NaOH because the hydroxide is OH and the valencies of each of them is 1 now what does that give always when you have two things with two things iron 2 sulfate with sodium hydroxide the exchange and what comes first here comes first after the arrow so iron is the first one that is written there so you should write iron first here so first with the second so iron with the hydroxide and then sodium with the sulfate so you have iron 2 hydroxide so you need a 2 under the hydroxide because the valency of iron is 2 and the sodium sulfate sulfate has a valency of 2 so you need to put 2 under the sodium to balance if you have two sodiums after the arrow you will need two sodiums before the arrow so that's why we need to put two in front of the NaOH are we okay if you check all of them you'll find that it's balanced okay a teacher added sodium oxide the equation shows the reaction and he says insert the appropriate state symbols so sodium oxide was added as a solid it was added to water which is a liquid when you dissolve something in water it forms an aqueous solution. Complete the equation for the reaction by inserting the state symbols. So lithium, lithium is a metal, so lithium has to be a solid. Water is liquid, lithium hydroxide when you have a solid reacting with a liquid it forms an aqueous solution and hydrogen is a gas. Do we understand the state symbols? They should be easy. Balance the following equation. Again let's balance this equation together. Before the arrow how many carbons? Before the arrow, I have two carbons. After the arrow, how many carbons? One. And that means that you need to put a two in front of the carbon after the arrow in order to have two carbons, two carbons. Now, how many hydrogens? A hint, always leave the oxygens till the end. Hydrogen before the arrow, you see that we have six hydrogens before the arrow because we have five and another one in the C2H5OH so you have a total of six hydrogens so on the other side you should also have a total of six hydrogens but we have only two and you ask yourself two times what is six two times three six so you need to put three in front of the water in order to have six hydrogens now we count the oxygens how many oxygens after the arrow now now remember that we multiply the number before by with the number that is down so we have oxygens two times two is four plus three we have a total of seven oxygens after the arrow what about before the arrow we already have one with the C2H5OH so I'm left with six I need six more so I need two times three to make it six do we understand that write an equation including state symbols to show the process that occurs when hydrogen is liquefied Hydrogen originally is a gas and hydrogen is diatomic so you have to write it H2. Now it's originally a gas so we use the G as the state symbol. Now he's saying it is liquefied that means from gas it is going to change into liquid. So that is the equation he's looking for. A word equation for one of the reactions is this. Write the chemical equation for this reaction. So let's write the symbols. Check the valences check the balancing so zinc is Zn copper 2 sulfate we said the valency of copper is 2 and the valency of sulfate is 2 so you don't write 2 anywhere they cancel so it is CuSO4 to give copper plus zinc sulfate is it balanced or does it need balancing one zinc before the arrow one zinc after the arrow 
one copper before the RO, one copper after the RO, one sulfur before the RO, one sulfur after the RO, four oxygens before the RO, four oxygens after the RO, so it's balanced. He's not asking for state symbols. Please always check if he's asking for state symbols or not to see if you have finished. So he's not asking for state symbols, so we go on to the next one. Balance the equation that represents the last stage in manufacture of nitric acid, doesn't matter. Now, if you sit down and balance this, let's balance this one by one. One nitrogen before the arrow, one nitrogen after the arrow. How many hydrogens do you have before the arrow? We have two hydrogens before the arrow. So we should really put two in front of the HNO3 in order to balance the hydrogens. Now, let's count the oxygens. How many oxygens before the arrow? I have 2 and 2, 4 and 1, 5. And on the other end, I have how many oxygens? 6. So I need to fix one of these. Now, which one am I going to fix? I need to fix the NO2 because after the arrow, I now have how many nitrogens? After the arrow, I have 2 nitrogens, so I need to put 2 nitrogens here. Now I have how many oxygens? I have 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 2, 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. On the other end, I have 2 times 3, 6. So I need to increase the one after the arrow. So let's put 3. Now, that means I now have 3 hydrogens, right? So let's increase the hydrogen. Now, to increase the hydrogen on the other end, I now have how many hydrogens before the arrow? I have 4. So I need to make this 4 so that I have 4 hydrogens before the arrow, 4 hydrogens after the arrow. But that means that I've ruined the rest. So how many nitrogens after the arrow now? After the arrow, I have four nitrogens. So I need to put four here in order to fix the nitrogens. Now, how many oxygens do we have? Can we check? Before the arrow, I have two times four is eight. Plus two, 10. Plus two, 12. And after the arrow, it is three times four. Remember, we multiply. Three times four is 12. So it is balanced. OK. When lithium burns in oxygen, it forms lithium oxide. Write a chemical reaction for the reaction between lithium and oxygen. Lithium is just Li, but oxygen has to be O2 because we said oxygen is diatomic. Now, he already gives me lithium oxide as Li2O, so I need to balance. So, oxygens before the arrow, I have two, so I need to put a two in front of the Li2O after the arrow in order to make two oxygens. But now that makes the lithium 4, so I needed to put 4 before the lithium. Do we understand how we balance that? Were you able to do that on your own? Okay, balance the equation to show the formation of sodium peroxide. Okay, let's try this. Now, how many sodium before the arrow? I have 1. After the arrow, I have 2. So I need to put 2 in front of the sodium. Now, how many oxygens before the arrow? 2. How many oxygens after the arrow? 2. So actually now it's balanced. <coughs> he gives you space to write something, <coughs> but actually you don't need to write anything because it is already balanced. So you can just leave it empty. Don't be fooled by the fact that he gives you space. That means I have to write something. No, I don't have to write something. If you want to go ahead and write one, that's fine, but you don't need to write one. Actually, you should not write one. It's not normal to write one because we said one is understood. So that's the balancing of the equation. Okay, the next question says crystals of copper 2 nitrate can be prepared by reacting solid copper oxide with dilute nitric acid. And he says write the equation for this reaction. So he's saying I'm reacting what with what? I'm reacting copper 2 oxide, which is CuO, with nitric acid to give copper nitrate plus what? Now, if you're not sure what it is, look at the equation and see what, uh, what we haven't used yet. But if you remember from your previous studies of acids and bases, and if you don't remember, we're going to study it again. Copper oxide is a base plus an acid gives a salt plus water. So this should be plus water. And then you will need to put two in front of the nitric acid in order to balance the equation. The equation for the conversion of titanium dioxide into titanium chloride is this. Write a chemical equation for the reaction between titanium chloride and magnesium. So he wants titanium chloride. So that is titanium chloride with magnesium because he already gives me the formula of titanium chloride in the 
uh, equation on top. So titanium chloride is TiCl4 plus magnesium will give magnesium chloride plus titanium. And then I balance because the magnesium has a valency of 2, so I have only 2 under the chlorine. Then I need to put 2 before that in order to balance the equation. Okay. Okay, now this gives a table of melting points of some compounds, and he says balance the equation for this reaction first. So let's try balancing. One uh, neodymium, that's the ND is neodymium. Uh, after the arrow, one ND. Uh, before the arrow, three fluorines. After the arrow, two fluorines. So I need to increase the one that is less. So I need to put two in front of the F3 and three in front of the F2 so that in both, on both sides of the arrow, I now have a total of six fluorines. Can you see that? So when one is three and the other is two, you'll find that you, you'll, tr you'll have to make them six. So this is two times three and the other is three times two. But that means that I have ruined the ND and I've ruined the CA. So I need to balance it and put three in front of the calcium so that now I have three calciums on both sides of the arrow and two in front of the ND to make them balanced. Okay, at one point uh, in this extraction, the temperature of the reaction mixture is 1,100. Which two substances are solids at 1,100? And we've said before that to be solid at a certain temperature, then the melting point has to be higher than that. So you're looking for which one has a temperature higher than 1,100. So that is calcium fluoride and neodymium fluoride. So just the most likely type of bonding present in neodymium fluoride. So you look at neodymium fluoride. It's very high melting point, so you would expect it to be an ionic bond. Neodymium reacts with oxygen to form neodymium oxide. So just the formula of neodymium oxide. OK, to write the formula of neodymium oxide, I have to figure out what's the valency of neodymium. How do I find out the valency of neodymium? I look at the f that first equation that he gives me. He gives me NDF3. So he put 3 under the F, so that means that the ND must have a valency of 3. So in order to write the formula, it is NDO. I know that ND has a valency of 3, so I have to put 3 under the oxygen. And the oxygen is in group 6, so it has a valency of 2. So that would be the formula of the compound he's looking for. Okay, this next question says the stages involved in the extraction of chromium from chromite are this, and he gives me a list of stages. <coughs> and the first question says complete the equation for the reaction in stage one. So basically, we're just required to balance it. If you sit down and balance this, you will find that you will need to put these numbers. Were you able to balance it? You need to keep going before the arrow and after the arrow until you've balance the equation. Write a chemical equation for the reaction in stage 2. <coughs> stage 2 says potassium dichromate is heated with carbon and he already gives me the formula of potassium dichromate in stage 1, K2Cr207, to form Cr2O3, K2CO3 and carbon monoxide. <coughs> and then you'll find that you need to put 2 in front of the carbon in order to balance. <coughs> 